Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 16th of October, 2007, approximately 9.15 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, my name is Albert E. Stands for Enrico Soria. And uh, my birth date is uh, June 30th, 1925. And I was born in uh, Turin, Torino, Italy. Okay. When did you come to this country? I, I came to the United... I immigrated to the United States in uh, February 1940. Uh, at that time, of course, I was uh, 15 years old. And uh, one of the reasons why I immigrated was uh, because of the condition in, in Italy. At the time, of course, was under the dictatorship of uh, Benito Mussolini. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was uh, a relationship also with the Germans. And my, uh, my father was uh, never a so called fascist. And, uh, we decided that uh, we better leave uh, the country and come mm -hmm. to the United Now your whole States. family came together? Uh, just my father. My, my mother passed away a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So just, 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 just my father and I. You had no siblings? My, really? Yeah, well, my sister decided oh. to stay in Italy at the time. She was, uh, she was in college, and she was uh, seven years older than I am. But uh, I decided to join my father here in Italy. Immigrating into uh, the United States. Now, did your sister survive the war? Yeah, my sister did survived. Did you ever see her? Well, uh, well when, uh, when I was uh, wounded in the hospital uh, in uh, Livorno, Leghorn, uh, the Red Cross tried to get in touch with my sister that lived in uh, Turin, and uh, they did get, uh, get a hold of her, but by that time this happened. I was <laughs> I, I, I was returned. I returned to the United States uh, in the uh, hospital ship, mm -hmm. so okay. I never got uh, never got to see her. What was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, I uh, graduated from uh, high school, uh, Mount Clair Academy in Mount Clair, New Jersey, in uh, 1943, June 1943. And uh, at that time, I wanted to join the ski troops, but uh, my father was decided that uh, I better start college before I would uh, enlist. Mm -hmm. So I was accepted at Columbia University. How how far did you go in, in well, Columbia? I just uh, uh, I just went for uh, the first semester and then in September I uh, joined the uh, United States Army. Okay. Now were you drafted or did you Yes, I was drafted in I was drafted uh, September 1st uh, 1943. Okay. But by that time I had already applied for the ski troops mm -hmm. because I was very interested uh, in skiing. Now, were you a skier prior to that? Yes, uh, Turin is located in the western part of Italy, and it's uh, right uh, between France and Switzerland. And uh, we used to ski. In fact, I ski a lot at Sestriere, which was uh, the site of the uh, Olympics. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I did a lot of skiing. I started skiing when I was, I guess, five or six years old. Oh. You know, I always like like the mountains, and I love skiing. I love winter. And uh, when I found out, uh, well, that uh, there were uh, ski troops, I got very interested in. And then, uh, of course, I saw uh, articles in Life magazine about it, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, there was uh, also uh, in at that time they had movie tones at the in uh, uh, before uh, movies mm -hmm. describing describing the uh, 
uh, state of the nation and so on, what's happening, and there was mm -hmm. uh, one one section on, on the ski troops, and of course that really got me interested. Now, where did you enter the service? I, I entered the service in uh, New York City. Okay. Um, when you entered the service, then did they allow you to select going into ski troops, or? Well, uh, to, uh, uh, really to understand uh, the situation, is, even before I went into the service, I got in touch with the uh, ski troops. They had, an off they had an office of the National Ski Patrol in uh, Lexington Avenue in New York, in which they were recruiting a uh, person interested in, uh, in the mountains and in mm -hmm. the winter warfare. And I had put my name in there because I wanted to join this, this outfit. So uh, they, they had my name and uh, my background, and I also had to give them three letters of recommendation indicating that I uh, had skied and that uh, I was interested in, uh, in uh, uh, winter warfare and so on. So when I was uh, drafted, I showed my the papers about the ski troopers, and uh, so they decided that uh, after basic training, I went uh, and joined um, uh, the 10th Mount 87th uh, Regiment uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Camp Hale, Colorado. This was now, where, where did you go for your basic training? The basic training went to Alabama, Fort McClellan, Alabama. And then I left there and went to uh, Colorado, uh, Camp Hale, which is in Pando, Colorado in uh, February 1944. Now, what was that training like in Colorado? What did they teach tough. you? It was very, very tough. We, uh, of course, Camp Hale, uh, Camp Hale was at uh, 9,200 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of snow then. And uh, uh, we, we trained, we had maneuvers in the mountains and uh, a lot of it was uh, above timberline. Uh, temperature went down to as low as 20, 30 degrees below zero. And uh, our, our training was uh, essentially uh, battle conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of hiking and a, li a lot of, um, of uh, Sleeping in the cold, and um, mountain climbing also. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, ge generally uh, winter, you know, winter winter training. Mm -hmm. well, you spoke before. You thought the Tenth Mountain had a u uniqueness about it. What was that uniqueness? Well, the uniqueness was that uh, uh, they uh, mostly, in fact, almost everybody initially uh, were um, individuals who were interested uh, in uh, winter that had experience in, either in skiing or mountain climbing or were guides or uh, they were uh, people, individual who were, uh, um, had, had experience in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. That's, so that, that sense was unique. And also what was unique is that most, um, most of the recruits or most of the members of the division were uh, pretty well educated individuals. Was, uh, we had uh, uh, ski coaches from Dartmouth and uh, we had uh, people from, uh, uh, ski instructor from Lake Placid and also instructors from uh, the uh, out west. So they were, um, like I said, it was, a, it was a different kind of uh, environment and different situation mm -hmm. that uh, the, regular, the regular army. In fact, I think that uh, uh, the dumbest private uh, in the outfit initially was eligible for OCS. So we had, uh, it was, it was, it was so how long was your training in Colorado? 
Well, we st stay there until uh, I stay there until uh, um, June of 1944, and then they shipped us down to Texas, Austin, Texas, for uh, warm weather training. And uh, we were very disappointed at the time because from 30 degrees below zero, we were going to 100 degrees. <laughs> now, now, just going back a second, uh, yeah. did you find that your equipment and clothing was adequate and warm enough for the training that you did? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, it was. Uh, uh, actually, before I joined the, the ski troops, uh, they had, um, all way back, back in 1942, uh, they had tested a lot of the equipment that they were, that we used mm -hmm. uh, later on. So yeah, the equipment was superb. We were, uh, we, we had uh, dou uh, double sleeping bags. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, good, uh, good uh, boots and shoes mm -hmm. and uh, what we call it, bunny boots. Um, which was felt boots that we could use after uh, uh, after we ski to remove these big uh, ski boots. Uh -huh. uh, we had mountain tents. Actually, that's a funny thing about the mountain tents. Uh, is uh, when uh, the temperature is very very low and uh, you sleep um, into the mountains, your uh, your breath condenses inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. inside the tent, and if you get up suddenly, the ice goes down <laughs> into your <laughs> into into your neck. So uh, uh, a lot of time, uh, what we used to do, we, we used to get under um, um, pine trees and. Uh, Take our, take our skis and just tamp the snow and make like a bed mm -hmm. and then put pine boughs under and then just sleep in the sleeping bag uh, without without a tent mm -hmm. and I, we found that we found that quite uh, quite comfort well not comfortable but mm -hmm. how did you compare your equipment to as compared to the German and German equipment? Oh, I think it was a lot better. Mm -hmm. what, much, much better. Now, did you train with snowshoes also? Yes, we trained with snowshoes also, that's correct. And we had mules also. Uh -huh. uh, the mules used to carry our equipment. And uh, the artillery had uh, mules because they, they had uh, what they called pack 75 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, cannon. And uh, yes, and we had uh, we also we had um, to take care of mules. Also, we we had lessons in how how to take care of mules. And uh, I forgot what the name uh, uh, were. Uh, yeah, oh, I can't, I can't remember. Anyway, at night, like the mules were put in corrals, and of course we had. Uh, we had to feed them and, and see that they behaved properly, more or less. So we had that kind of training also. Right? Now, how long were you in Texas? In Texas, we were from uh, from June until December, and then uh, uh, we went over to uh, uh, Virginia, and that's uh, uh, when we went overseas. How did you go overseas? We went over, we went over to see on the uh, USS West Point, and uh, we landed. We landed in uh, Naples in uh, January of uh, 19, uh, 1945. Now, were there any reservations uh, with you being Italian going into Italy to fight? Were no, there? in fact, uh, I was very glad. That Actually, also one of the reasons to go back a little bit, one of the reasons why, why I joined the ski troop, I always thought that perhaps they would go into Europe, into the Alps, mm -hmm. and uh, 
that way I would help liberate my country from uh, from uh, Mussolini and from Hitler. Mm -hmm. So when our destination was uh, told us that oh, two or three days after we left uh, Newport News, Virginia, told us that our destination was Naples, I was very, very happy. I was going back into my home country, uh, helping to uh, uh, fight the, the Germans and mm -hmm. to remove the dictatorship from uh, from my country. So I was uh, I was uh, very very happy about that. Now, when you arrived in Naples, did you immediately go to the front? <coughs> yes, we went. Uh, oh, I think um, I kind of forget exactly, but I mm -hmm. think within uh, within a day. We left and went uh, to um, Pisa, which is uh, not too far from uh, Leghorn, on uh, on a train. A train was uh, uh, those forty or was it forty and eight? They forty call and them. eight, yeah, on 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 forty and eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we st we stayed there in Pisa for a few days, and then we went up on the front. On the front line. So when you were under fire almost immediately then? Uh, yes, well initially uh, there, it, it was a kind of a st static line yeah. at that time in the Apennines. Mm -hmm. And um, initially what we used to do is we used to send patrols out to find out where the Germans were. So actually in the first, uh, in the first month or so uh, we really uh, did not go into what we call battle condition, mm -hmm. but more or less into uh, into patrols to find out and get some information about uh, Germans' activity and so on. And uh, each uh, each company at the time was assigned an Italian partisan, which was part of uh, this is what the kind of a hat that they used to wear. Mm -hmm. And the reason. Can, can you hold that up again? A bit more. Now, what unit is that on the front? You, you this is the tenth month. No, for oh, the Italian oh, unit. This is the Alpini. Can, can you turn that like towards this? me? Yeah. yeah. This uh, this is the Alpini, which is the Italian mountain troops, mm -hmm. okay. right? And they were this kind of, this kind of uh, hat. Mm -hmm. No, so each company was assigned was one. One. Each company was assigned mm -hmm. one we called partisans, mm -hmm. and I, being Italian and knowing Italian, I was always assigned for the patrol as to be the interpreter. And uh, usually, this the, was um, the operation was at night, and I'm just trying to get in touch to see where where the Germans were, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was wasn't wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> but uh, it was quite an experience. Now, w w were the uh, language dialects different at all? Oh, yes, they were, but, but uh, they, they, they spoke pretty good Italian, uh -huh. so I, I had no problem, I had no problem understanding. Okay. But uh, you, you are right to bring this up because there are a lot of dialects right. in, in Italy, and, and some of them are very, very hard to understand, no question about that. So. Uh, so, uh, why why were some of these patrols so diff difficult? Well, they were they were all at night, and of course, what you were trying to do, what you were trying to do, you were trying to get in touch uh, with the German troops to find out exactly where they were and possibly to take prisoners mm -hmm. for interrogation, mm -hmm. and uh, so you had to be very very careful in how you operated because. Uh, uh, the patrols usually consisted uh, of just uh, one or two squads, so it was 12, 24, 24 men, usually only about 12, 12 men, mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to locate the German and see what kind of equipment and get information back. And uh, we were always told not to start firing until we had to fire. Because what kind of weapon did you carry? I, I carried a carabine. 30 mm -hmm. millimeter carabine mm -hmm. because uh, I had a radio. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, squads and the M1 
and uh, and also in each squad had a BAR, grounding automatic. Uh, did you ever have any trouble with the weapons, with the weather, how cold it, it got? Uh, yeah, we we had to take care of them, but but they were they they we, we actually never had any problems mm -hmm. with it. But you had to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the, you can uh, you know you know you can lay them in the snow or in the yeah. What was your unit like? Uh, the camaraderie between the men and the officers, so on. Oh, it was wonderful. The. Uh, 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 like uh, you know, like I told you before, uh, we were we were all um, pretty much uh, had the same, more or less the same background because we had the same likes and the same dislikes, more mm -hmm. or less. So actually, even though uh, I was uh, I was just a PFC, private first class, and uh, I was very close to the captain, which our captain was Captain Duncan, which by the way he was a ski racer. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, even though it was our superior, it, it was one of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, this was true until we started getting um, um, replacements. As we lost men, mm -hmm. of course, we had to replace them with the new men. And the, and the replacement, of course, were just regular, uh, r r regular um, recruits. Okay, so they weren't mountain no, troops. No, they were mountain troops. No, right, uh -huh. right. So you basically had to teach them on the job, then. Well, but the recruits actually, we 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 got them when we were in Italy, and uh, the the bulk were still the mountain troops, and we still mm -hmm. had. Uh, uh, man war, uh, warfare. So uh, they were just following, following us. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in the River Ridge? Yes, yes, River Ridge and uh, Mount Belvedere. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, we all. Um, this was in. That's our first really combat experience was on February, I think it was February 14, I, uh, when we assaulted uh, Mount Belvedere. Um, we stayed uh, in this uh, little town called Vidicharico uh, the night before. And uh, the 86th Regiment, uh, we, I was in the 87th, they, um, they scaled River Ridge. And then we we went on Mount Belvedere, and uh, uh, that was uh, that was a tough a tough a tough battle, and that was our first. Experience. We got quite a few casualties there, and then uh, and then fr from then we th we took a series of mounds, Mount de la Torracha and so on, Castel Diano. and uh, I had uh, I I had a radio at the time was, uh, I think it was 536, was uh, they call it walkie-talkie mm -hmm. with the antenna. Right. I had that shot off my hand, the antenna. Yeah, and uh, I was lucky until, oh, later on when I got, uh, when I got wounded. Well, before that, uh, that was uh, actually on the second push was, uh, in April, that uh, we have taken, uh, we have taken this uh, uh, little uh, town. I forgot the name of it now. It was uh, up in the mountains, and uh, we were getting uh, fire. In the captain, Dr. Uh, Captain Duncan, decided that uh, we should see where this fire was coming from so that we could uh, advise the artillery to uh, zero in on their position. So it was uh, cap the captain and myself and his runner and the artillery uh, officer and his runner uh, went uh, 
outside of town and to arrange to f if, if, uh, to see if we could really detect where the fire was coming from. And uh, the Germans uh, spotted us and they sent water fire in there and I was the only one to survive. And so that was, uh, that, was, that, that was a very, uh, I hate to talk about it, but it was... It was no, you were wounded there? No, and I wasn't wounded then. Okay. No. No, I was uh, I was wounded. Uh, actually, toward the end of the war, I was wounded on April twenty first. We were in a poor alley. Mm -hmm. uh, we are ready uh, going toward uh, ready to cross the poor river, and uh, the Germans were actually in the run. We were we were uh, we were advanced, advancing quite quite fast. And it was about uh, oh. I about six o'clock in the evening, we saw this uh, plane was uh, B-24 come over us, and we were moving so fast uh, that we had uh, a canister of uh, yellow bombs to, whenever we saw a plane coming toward us, we would delineate where our front line was so that uh, they, they, would, mm -hmm. they would bomb us. So they put these flares, flares out, and the uh, and the plane dipped his wing, and then they came back and strafed us. And that was a, a plane that was captured by the Germans, and there were Germans in it, and uh, uh -huh. and uh, this this is where I got wounded. Uh -huh. Right. So it was uh, Germans flying an American plane. Yeah, then. Germans flying, Germans flying an American plane. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, we had uh, oh, about fifteen or twenty casualties, mm -hmm. that, uh, and I was I was lucky because uh, uh, I f five or six died, but I just had a leg wound, so I was mm -hmm. very very lucky. So you were hit with uh, machine gun ball, oh shrapnel, shrapnel from the bomb. Yeah, okay. they dropped the bomb. <laughs> I'll never forget, uh, the medic came over and gave me a shot of morphine, and then they gave me another shot of morphine, and boy, I felt great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they put me on top, uh, as I remember, they put me on, on top of a jeep, on top mm -hmm. of the hood. We got, uh, the, the medics at the time had, jeep, uh, had jeeps, uh, but on the side they had two spots in which each, um, um, and they can put two two wounded uh, wounded person on a stretcher, mm -hmm. two stretchers, mm -hmm. and, and but uh, those were taken, so they put me on top on top of it. And then I don't remember very much, but I was very happy. I didn't care what was. <laughs> going on. Now you mentioned uh, we have a jeep on the floor right. here, and you said that was different than jeeps you saw over in Europe. Well, they used to have uh, no. This is the same thing, except they 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 had a um, oh I don't know what you call it a straight um, uh, piece of uh, whatever what would you say uh, the word doesn't come to me uh, by the front fender by the front fender it had a protruding. Uh, piece of steel mm -hmm. going going up maybe uh, six seven feet maybe six feet so so that uh, if they came across any wires oh, okay. Okay. it it would cut them off mm -hmm. wire cutter mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it was kind of a wire cutter mm -hmm. so that's the only thing that I mm -hmm. and they all had that mm -hmm. yeah. right now um, you went. To a hospital then after you were well, wounded or it, it, an it's, a series, it's, it's a series of things, you know. First of all, you go to a, a what you call an emergency, mm -hmm. in which they they patch you, you know they patch you up, uh, and then they bring you to a field hospital, and then from a field hospital they take you to a, reg, a regular hospital. Uh, so uh, you you went to uh, three actually three different hospitals before or uh, before you they, they really take care of your mm -hmm. your your wound uh, mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I finally ended up in the hospital in, uh, in Leghorn, in Livorno. How long were you there for? Uh, I was there, uh, let's see, I was wounded uh, April 21st. And uh, I was there until, uh, until the middle of June. Uh, and then I came back to the United States in a hospital ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, they landed in um, Charleston, North Carolina, uh, South Carolina. Then from Charleston, they flew us, they flew me back to Utica, New York here at the uh, Rhodes General Hospital. And I stayed there until uh, uh, September, until they put me to a, a recuperating uh, place uh, in uh, uh, Long Island, uh, Camp Upton. It sounds like you had a very serious wound then. Not, not really. It wasn't that, that serious. It was uh, the shrapnel when I threw my right leg. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had uh, a broken leg beside, beside the shrapnel. Mm -hmm. And there's always infection. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So uh, uh, that's one of the reasons. Was the infant. and then there was, uh, you know, they, they they had they had to rehabilitate you a little bit, and, but uh, they did a wonderful the uh, the Army Medical Corps. I can't say more anything. They're just wonderful. They were the nurses and uh, the surgeons and the medical staff were just uh, they were just great. Now, uh, where were you when the war ended? in uh, Europe? Uh, when, the, when the war, uh, the, I was, um, well, when the war ended in Europe, which was uh, in, in uh, May 8th, I think, or 4th, mm -hmm. uh, I was in a hospital in Leghorn, mm -hmm. right, in, uh, and, but then uh, when uh, VE, when uh, VJ Day, when uh, the war actually ended mm -hmm. in August, I guess it was September, yeah. uh, I was uh, over in uh, Utica, Rhodes General Hospital. Yeah. What was the reaction to the people in the hospital oh, both one, times? Wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. everybody, everybody was very, very happy. And, and then uh, from Rhodes, uh, from Utica, uh, if you were able to walk, I, I, at that time I had crutches. We used to be able to get passes, uh, weekend pass to go to New York City. And they had a special train we used to call the Purple Heart Express from, uh, from Utica to, uh, to New York. And then there was the same thing, train coming back to, came to uh, Utica on Sunday, Sunday night. No, the Army was, uh, really, they, they uh, took good care of their, uh, of their soldiers. I now, um, had your, uh, your father heard that you had been wounded, was he able to visit you, or you visit him at all during that time? Uh, when I was, uh, no, when I was in, Je when I was at Rhodes General, in Eureka, I used to visit him. I used to get, take this uh, uh, Purple Heart Express mm -hmm. because I was able to be on uh, on crutches. And then I was discharged uh, with a medical discharge, October uh, October fifth, uh, nineteen forty five, from uh, Camp Hopton. And uh, this is this is a. This is a picture of me just before I was discharged. Right? If you hold it closer like, yeah, to you, I can yeah. focus in. Yeah, this is a picture just, uh, oh, I guess maybe a week or two before I was discharged. And what you're seeing, those, those uh, edifices there are, were our um, barracks. Okay. All right. All right. Do you have any... Uh, 
anything that stands out that was like inspirational or a humorous story that you recall? Oh. Well, yeah, not really humorous. I, 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 I recall very distinctly talking to my, my captain uh, just um, uh, while we were um, fighting overseas, and uh, I was a little bit uh, dejected. And uh, he says, uh, he says to me, he says, "Hey, sorry, uh, you and I are not made for this war, or something, something like that." It's, uh, I'll, I'll remember that very distinctly. Um, there, are, there are things that happen, uh, and. Uh, when we were at Camp Swift, I, 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 I think the worst part of Camp Swift uh, in Texas was the heat. We were not, we, we just were not used to that kind of heat because we had been in the mountains mm -hmm. in the cold weather, training in the snow, and all of a sudden they brought us back. We thought, what the heck is the Army doing to us? In fact, at that time, we all thought that we probably were going to go to the Burma, India, China, Burma, and India um, theater. Theater, right? Mm -hmm. CBI. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we, ne we never thought. And I was, at that time, I was very disappointed because, like I told you before, I always thought that one of the reasons of me being joined the ski troop that I wouldn't end up in Europe, mm -hmm. in the Alps. But was uh, I, I I remember uh, when we left uh, Newport News uh, uh, the uh, embarkation to go to uh, to the front. They didn't tell us where we were going, and uh, but I noticed uh, that we had all, we all had our compass, and I noticed that as soon as we left, we were going south. And I said, oh my God, here we go south. We'll probably go over to Panama Canal and, and over to, to, uh, to the Pacific. And sure enough, we will probably go to this CBI uh, mm -hmm. front. Then after three days or two days, we went south of Bermuda because we, were, we went on a squadron because the uh, uh, West Point, which was the SS America, mm -hmm. one of the was a very fast transport. So they finally told us, your destination is Naples, Italy. Boy, yeah, everybody, everybody just jumped up. <laughs> and I, I, they probably didn't applaud, but they were, we were happy that we mm -hmm. weren't going to, uh, to the Pacific. Um, after you left the service, did you make use of the GI Bill? Oh, yes. <coughs> See, <coughs> excuse me. When uh, when I was um, uh, when I went in the army, uh, I had I had six months of uh, college, mm -hmm. and I got a leave of absence. So as soon as I got back, in fact, I still had the uniform when I went back to class, and uh, under the by that time under the GI Bill, which which was very good, but I had no problem getting back to Columbia University, that's when I went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Did you use that 5220 club at all? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, in the summertime, <laughs> in the summertime after uh, uh, the month of, uh, you know, July and August, mm -hmm. I used the 50, I, I thought it was rich, my God, you know. <laughs> Twenty dollars and twenty dollars for fifty-two weeks, but I I just used it in the summertime. Mm -hmm. if, you know. Okay. God, I forgot about a fifty-two <laughs> twenty club. What kind of work did you do after you left the service? Uh, as a chemist, over at uh, Sterling Winthrop uh, Research Institute there in uh, Rensselaer, New York. Uh, Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Yeah, well, uh, I, I, I joined the 10th Mount um, uh, 
Federation. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I haven't. I haven't joined the American Legion or the uh, veteran of foreign war, veterans of foreign war, or the uh, what is it, American Disability. Mm -hmm. Disabled. Yeah. They were, no, I didn't join any of those. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I'm, I just joined the um, uh, tenth, the tenth month uh, uh, association. Mm -hmm. So you see people then that you served with. Yes. I saw. Did you right from the beginning? Did you uh, stay in contact with anyone? Well, not when I was going to college. Uh, I started getting in contact with them uh, uh, when I moved to uh, this area. Mm -hmm. uh, which was in uh, October, in October 1948 is uh, when I came into the Capital District. And uh, then at that time I found out about uh, they were having a chapter of the 10th Bond Division, uh, Eastern New York uh, chapter, and I joined that. Mm -hmm. So that's Now were any of the men in it, men that you served with? Oh, well, uh, I, 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 I was uh, at that time. I was very active skiing. Even though, even though when I was discharged, uh, uh, the medical department of the army told me, "Boy, you'll never ski again because of your leg." Oh, I said, "Well, I don't know about that." Uh, so, in 1948, I didn't ski. 1949, I didn't ski, and I started again in 1950. I just had to, mm -hmm. and I had no problem. And uh, I used to ski, I used to go to Stowe and to Manchester, Vermont. And believe it or not, I met um, two of the, uh, two of, uh, the uh, uh, soldiers that uh, were in my same company. One was Joe Jones at, in Rutland, Vermont, and uh, Joe McNeil's in uh, Manchester. And, uh, and we skied together for a few, a few times. So it was, it was very, mm -hmm. very nice. Right? Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned when you looked at out here in the museum, we have uh, someone in a ski outfit. You mentioned the name of the skis, what you guys called them. Uh, <laughs> two by fours. <laughs> why, why was that? <laughs> oh, they were, well, if you look at them, they were just like two boards, <laughs> you know, nothing like these skis that you get today mm -hmm. or even these skis that uh, uh, civilian used to use, you know, they were real thick, they, they actually two by fours if you look at them. Now did you have to wax them? Oh yes, we, we waxed them and uh, but then we had uh, uh, seals that we put them under the skis to go up, uh, up, up, uh, up uh, the hills, seal skis, seal, seal skins. Uh, now, how was that attached? Uh, it had a loop in the front, mm -hmm. and, and then the length, the whole length of the ski was uh, uh, the, the seals, and then they had straps that would uh, that would uh, attach to the uh, ski. Now that stopped you from slipping and sliding. Yeah, it stopped you from uh, from sliding downhill, <laughs> but you can, uh, but you could ski down a little bit, uh -huh. but they would. To stop because of the oh, okay. the, the scales on the scale the, right yeah yeah, okay. yeah we had those and also I used uh, I used um, uh, snowshoes and that was uh, pretty tricky uh, because if you were if you were in the um, um, uh, uh, gunner if you were a gunner in a machine in in, in, in the mortar platoon or in the weapons platoon, if you were in the weapons platoon, in which uh, consisted of machine guns and mortars, then instead of skis, you had to have snowshoes because of the weight. Mm -hmm. okay. So I had, I, 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 and for a while I was in the uh, uh, weapons platoon, mm -hmm. and I had a machine gun, 30 caliber machine gun, so we had, um, we had these uh, what we called bear paws, which was uh, well, those uh, not those long elongate, elongated uh, snowshoes, but when when they were more more round, more round mm -hmm. because of the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I didn't care too much for that.
Not with a radio, you didn't have to have right, the... Yeah, right, okay. right. And uh, also, it's another, another funny situation. You were asking about the funny situations. Well, well I, just, I just remember this. Uh, when we were in training in Colorado in the snow, some, sometime uh, we were uh, behind mules, going uphill behind mules. Mm -hmm. And what we used to do quite a bit Take a hold of the uh, of the tail yeah. of the mule so that it would help you. Okay. Well, you know, sometimes sometimes the mule just to pass hair. <laughs> now I, I, that, that's when we wish we had a gas mask. <laughs> yeah, how were the mules? I mean, were they uh, kind of ornery and, and and hard to control? Uh, at times, at times, yes. Uh, I. I, I I never care for. Uh, I guess I used to call picket duty. That's what it was. Take care of the mules uh, mm -hmm. at night. Uh -huh. uh, uh, in which um, they used to have um, a rope from two points, and then each mule was attached to this mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to the rope. And sometimes they didn't like that. And sometimes if you came along, you would kick you, you know. So you have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I never cared for that duty very much, but everybody had to have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I'll never forget about holding up to the mule's tail. <laughs> so that that was one of the uh, funny situations mm -hmm. that you asked me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll recall some more. <laughs> <coughs> now, was, it, was there ever a problem with the mules being noisy, you know, making a lot of loud noises that could alert the Germans? Or? Well, at, uh, when we went overseas, the the mules were were uh, 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 were taken care of mostly by the Italian uh, Italian uh, partisans and 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 uh, um, uh, Alpinis. Uh -huh. And they 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 did a lot of our transportation for them. Now uh, I don't recall that they would be. You know, in in a battle, in a in a battle, you don't see the mules because mm -hmm. the mules usually were in the back, yeah. bringing up supplies after. Uh, either bring up supplies, and and after they uh, they brought the supplies, they used to bring back. Uh, bodies in, uh, in body bags. You know, that's of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, soldier killed. Yeah. So, how do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Oh, I, th I think uh, I, I, uh, I, I really enjoyed my time in the service. I, I won't say enjoyed it, but I. Was, I was glad that I, let's put it this way, I was glad that I served for two reasons. One, because I helped uh, uh, my country, my native country. And, and, and second, I made uh, quite a few good acquaintances. And third, also, because of the discipline and be able to uh, take orders and uh, uh, being uh, more or less on your own, it's uh, no. I, uh, I I I think the service was very beneficial to me, and uh, it's well, it's part of uh, part of my life now. And uh, I was glad I was glad to have served, and I'm very glad to do, be part of a, be a veteran of uh, of World War II. No question about that. Did you um, ever go back to Italy? Yes, I went back two or three times. And uh, my my outfit um, has trips uh, uh, almost every every two or three years to go back to uh, our, uh, where we where we fought. But well, I never been back there. Uh, I was back as with with my family. But not, uh, but not with, uh, uh, we would be tense. So you've seen your sister and her family? Yeah, yes, then? yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right, well, thank you very much for your interview. Well, you're very welcome, and enjoy it.
very much. Uh, is that all right? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is Camp Hill. This is a picture taken uh, of uh, Camp Hill, Colorado, where we trained. Okay, got it. And um, uh, th th this is what you see from Camp from Camp Hill. This is what was called Cooper Cooper Hill. That's where we had our training and our maneuvers. Okay. Uh, this uh, this this picture shows uh, that's uh, I I'm one of the those individual. This is during uh, what we call our D series maneuvers in uh, uh, March of uh, 1944 at uh, Camp Hill. Uh, what was a four four weeks maneuvers in the uh, high uh, mountains. Okay. Oh, uh, this is this is just a picture picture of me on f going uh, out of camp, going to uh, uh, a weekend pass, going to Glenwood Springs, Colorado. This is in Colorado. In Colorado, Camp Hill. Yeah, that's uh, that bridge that you see. It's the Red Cliff Bridge, okay. which was ten miles from Camp Hill, and this this was where our destination to do. We need, Actually, what we were waiting was waiting for a ride, hitchhiking uh, to go to uh, uh, Glenwood Spring. Now you had to hitchhike. Oh yeah. We Did you people always give us a soldier oh, ride? <laughs> no problem. No, no. Yeah, we hitchhike all over. Mm -hmm. See, we didn't have cars. Yes, so, uh, right. So yeah, and uh, oh, this uh, this was taken. Uh, this was taken in in Italy at. Uh, one of the towns that we had taken, that's Pietra Colora, and that shows uh, S Sergeant Tripp and Sergeant Limoges and, uh, and Stillwell. That was uh, in, just before the big push into the Po Valley. Okay. Uh, this is again is a picture of uh, Sergeant Stillwell at Pietra Colora after uh, we took the uh, Mount called Della Vedetta. No, he's wearing the winter parka yeah, there. Right. Said. Okay. Oh, this, this is a this was given to me while I was in a hospital in Leghorn. This is a picture of Mussolini and his uh, girlfriend. That was uh, they they uh, the uh, partisan that killed and then they hung him in Milan. Okay. And this is this is Mussolini. And uh, uh, this is a picture of me and uh, a friend of mine coming home on a hospital ship. From well, you're you're on the right. Yes, I'm right here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming home on a hospital ship. And that's about it. Okay. okay well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.